For me, it was a long way down the line. After years and years of healing work, of prayer, of raging, and therapy in prayer at my abusers, that I was ready to open myself to the possibility of forgiveness. No amount of willed or false or hopeful forgiveness was going to fix me or heal what had been done to me. We can get to forgiveness, yes, but there are not shortcuts, and self-forgiveness and true healing must come first. It is vital to remember, however, that forgiveness does not mean in any way that perpetrators should not be confronted or prosecuted, or that we were able to forget or minimize the abuse. Like Holocaust survivors, we must always remember and honor the full impact of what has happened. Neither does it mean that our outrage at the crime is no more. Cynthia Crysdale writes of the damaging effect of the Christian virtue of forgiveness when it is seen as silencing of the proper anger of victims. Forgiveness is hard won, a gift of grace. And if it is to happen in a healthy way, it will probably happen after much healing work has already been done. It should never be hung over a survivor of abuse as an expectation. It is my conviction that a loving God would want us to be withhold any forgiveness that would cause us to fall back into spiritual sickness. I also believe that God would not reject any abuse survivor who was not able to reach a place of forgiveness in this life. I have heard many sermons on forgiveness that have failed to understand the delicate dynamics of forgiveness for victims of abuse, and it kept me from God instead of bringing me closer to him. Be.